Welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us on this Trainers Work webinar. I'm talking with Farms to Executive Director Joy Kaufman, and she wants to share with us about the five freedom priorities of Farms to. So let me introduce you to her. Okay, hi, Khan. It's great to be with you in Zimbabwe. And yeah, the farm stew, the first time I ever said it to anybody was actually in Gweru, Zimbabwe. So I think maybe Zimbabwe can claim some part of the formation of farm stew. And as you probably have already learned during the class so far that farm stew is an acronym, and I'm guessing you're going through those letters and understanding them well. During this short time, I want to spend a little bit of time on the five freedom priorities because Farms2 is all about freedom in Christ and also in our lives. Uh, and so we have been focusing on these for about a year and a half, and we really feel like they capture the essence of what we're trying to do. So I'm going to do a screen share mm -hmm. and take you to our website and show you just a couple quick resources uh, first, before we get there, there's a pop-up window that shows up on our website. And one of the things we want to do is freedom from fear uh, of this terrible disease. So we encourage people to put in their name, first name, last name, and their email, and then they can download a free guide that will give them good information about how to optimize their immune system and try to stay healthy during this challenging time. For now though, we're focusing on the five freedom priorities. So I wanna take people to the recipe and click on five freedom priorities right here. So anyone that's watching and is on the internet can go see this for themselves. Okay, so the five freedom priorities are based on what are the focused areas that Farms Do is gonna be successful in our goal, which is to promote the health and well being of poor families and vulnerable people throughout the world. And, you know, it's not just for them, it's for all of us. I have personally benefited from the implementing the principles of farm stew. But so this is for all families. And this first one is the freedom from dependency. And so we really want to encourage families to be able to have their own garden and be able to grow an enterprise from that garden. And so we might call that uh, in development speak food security and livelihood. We want the families to be able to have a business. So we encourage the village savings and loan associations and also starting small businesses using the excess produce from their agricultural products. The second freedom priority is primarily focused on girls who often are the future mothers of families and really so important for a society to function well. And without freedom from shame, or menstrual hygiene supplies and education, those girls often drop out of school early. And there's a lot of evidence that when girls do not get an education, the children that they have in the future are more likely to be malnourished and more likely to struggle in school themselves. So we want to build a future of a country or of a, of a society uh, by helping these girls have freedom from shame. Our third priority, and I'm sure you've had to deal with this sometime during your time in Zimbabwe Khan, is there are many places where people do not have the water that they need, or that water is unclean and unsanitary. So our third freedom is to try to help people be able to have the water in a place where it doesn't require a lot of drudgery or cause disease. So water that is close by to their home, um, they might still be getting it from a common well, but not miles away. And also one that is clean quality and doesn't cause 2,300 people to die every day from waterborne diseases. So that's our third freedom priority. Our fourth, and you can now see the fifth as well. Our fourth is the freedom to share globally. So we believe that this farm stew recipe and our curriculum, which I'll show you in a moment, uh, we believe that it has the power to transform lives. And we believe that based on a lot of evidence where we've already been teaching farms to. So you can see right here, we have an e-learning course. And with that e-learning course, anybody anywhere with power to connect to the internet can actually 
learn what we teach in Farm Stew. So we invite anybody to sign up for that course. I'll go there in a moment. Once we finish the fifth freedom priority, which is the freedom to grow. And with this freedom priority, we really want to help the organization Farm Stew have the capacity to grow. So we're doing that by partnering with universities. Uh, right now, we are launching our course, this e-learning course with some supplemental material at Malawi Adventist University and at the Adventist School of Medicine in Kigali, Rwanda. So we're excited to be able to teach Farm Stew through universities in Africa. And we invite you to consider if your organization might want to become a partner organization with Farm Stew. If you are interested, you can write info at farmstew.org and we will get you connected to someone who can help you consider a partnership with Farm Stew that would allow your organization to also teach the recipe of abundant life. So that's the five freedoms. And what do you think, Khan? <laughs> Should I show people the e-learning real quickly? Yeah, sure. You can show them that. Okay. So the e-learning course this will show up, it looks a little bit different when you sign in as a student, but basically the courses that are available right now online are the mini course, which is just a half an hour short course that shows what Farmstu is all about and why it was developed and how you can get involved. And then the basic course in Spanish, of course, is there and we're hoping to get it up in multiple languages soon. And then this is what is kind of the most precious thing that we have to share, it's the recipe manual. And we call it that because maybe your grandmother had a great recipe and you like to share a recipe when it's really good. So that's what we invite people to do is share the recipe of farm stew. So again, this course is free. It's available online. It has videos and lessons and each lesson has a quiz to make sure that you understood the content of the lesson. And we even have people that can help uh, instruct you if you have questions that you want to ask during the lesson. So I'll just click on maybe one using mulch to improve your soil. So you can see each lesson has highlights. Uh, so it gives you a basic quick summary of the lesson. And then we go through the lesson teaching you and it's all based on God's word, sound science, and written in such a way that it's very practical and that you can apply it in your own situation. So for example, mulch, how have you benefited from mulch, Khan? Well, we use mulch all the time here. Mulch um, is, has improved our quality of our vegetables so much. That's exciting. And you see gardens going from the traditional looking garden that's struggling to a bountiful paradise, right? It makes a big that difference, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that's just one lesson showing you the highlights, mulch, how it suppresses weeds, cools the soil, increases organic matter, and retains moisture during the dry periods. So simple, simple things. Uh, we teach things that really don't cost hardly any money, if any. And then at the end, you always have a quiz that's at the end. And actually, this was taken in Zimbabwe in I believe 2016. So like I said, Zimbabwe is part of the whole uh, formation of Farm Student. We're excited to share this. So you can also leave a comment. And then once you finish a lesson, you can always go then to the quiz. And it looks like I already took the quiz and I got 100%. So, <laughs> but you can take the quiz. We try to make them simple, not intimidating, but just making sure that you understood. So. Could you tell us, share with us a bit more about what they're doing in South Sudan and Uganda? I'd be so happy to. So we have teams of trainers. Some of them are full-time paid staff of uh, Farms to Uganda or Farms to South Sudan, which is a registered NGO in those countries. And others, many, many more, are full-time volunteers with Farms to. And what these wonderful people do is they go into the villages and they work with the local leaders, get permission from you know, the authorities to go in and teach the hands-on farm stew classes. And so that might involve a cooking class, using whole food, plant-based diet, you know, locally available resources. It also, we, we do gardening classes. 
and you know teaching people techniques like mulch and others to help improve the fertility and the productivity of their soil. Uh, they also teach the village saving and loan methodology, which is incredibly powerful for people that have had very little resources to suddenly realize that if they save a little bit each week, they can actually develop the capital that they need to start a small business. So there's things like that that the uh, farm stew trainers and volunteers are doing. And the goal is to produce a uh, situation where homes in those communities become farms to certified and a farms to certified home is something really special and i'm going to take you to a screen share again i don't know have you heard about the farms to certified homes con yes i've heard about them before okay what do you think of the concept i, I think it's great especially when you take into context of the community idea, you know, of, of having multiple farms to homes and they're all forming a, a community. I quite like that. And uh, it's, it's a great way because you get to go to people's houses and, and help them in their own homes. So I think it's a really great idea. That's awesome. Yeah, it seems to be catching on really well. So I'm just going to screen share real quick and show you what is a farms to certified home. And again, this is in our lesson in module 10 in a lesson called How to Pioneer the Work of Farm Stew. So there's a section in here called Farm Stew Certified Homes. And there's five characteristics that are required. And then there are some uh, recommended characteristics that you have to have two out of the four in order to be certified. So the required elements is that we have a garden with three or more different kinds of vegetables growing in it. The children between six months and five years of age have to have a normal mid upper arm circumference. So that's a measurement right here on the arms of kids from six months to five years. You use a little tape, which actually I can grab. I always keep it with me. <laughs> so this is like the stethoscope for doctors. This is a public health nutritionist little tape where you can put it around the arm of a child and you can get these at most any health clinic and you can just test and see what is the status of the child. So if that was my mid upper arm, I would look at it through the window and I would see if the color was green or if it was a little bit skinnier yellow, which means they have mild malnutrition or red, which means it's severe and the child is really in trouble. So we want families that have children in the green category so that we can know that they are not severely malnourished. Then the homes also have to have a rubbish pit and not have rubbish all over the environment. Um, we need cleanliness is next to godliness, right? And the same with the latrine. They need to have a latrine that is used by the family and is kept clean. And the home must have a tippy tap hand washing station with either full with water so that we know it's actually being used. And then it needs to have either soap or wood ash for hand washing. So those are the five required elements for the farms to home certification. And then in addition, the families need to have two of these for a compost pile that doesn't have any rubbish in it, uh, a family belonging either to a faith-based community or a community service organization. So they're not just living for themselves, but they're living for others. And then a home that engages in a savings club or produces something to sell. So we want them thinking, about how to handle money in a stewardship kind of way. And then lastly, we want no one in the household producing or consuming alcohol because we know that is the thief that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So that is a certified home. And if you wanna learn how to help families become certified homes and then certified communities, as Khan was talking about, I encourage you to go ahead on the Farms Do website right here sign up for the recipe or click on the recipe, go to the e-learning course and sign up for the Farms to Recipe Manual. And then you can learn more in module 10, how to pioneer the work of Farm Stew. So just in closing, I, I would like to just to get your idea about what you would like to see or what your vision is for Farm Stew in Zimbabwe. I would love to. Um, my heart has been in Zimbabwe since 2006, actually. It's when I had my last born child. And during that time, I was reading about the situation in Zimbabwe, which was dire. So I was raising an infant and I was learning about Zimbabwean mothers that 
couldn't feed their babies. And so my heart was attached to Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. And my dream is that that will never happen again. And that families will be able to thrive. And even during this time of COVID, uh, I just, I'm so excited because I was in the Central Zimbabwe Conference office in 2016, and I was encouraging them, use this idle land, plant something, grow something. <laughs> and at the time, it was just a foreign concept. And I was working with a person named Maxwell Gora, who was the landscaper basically for the place. And he grew all sorts of ornamental, beautiful plants, but there was no food growing there. So Maxwell Gora, I told him, I said, you're too smart <laughs> to be growing just food um, that's not for actual people to consume. You know, this country is hungry and people need food. And so this is the new vision of the Central Zimbabwe Conference Office of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. He just sent this to me last week. Instead of ornamental plants, they are growing food. That's a lot of cabbages. Wow. That is 2,000 square meters. We saw it fit for the land to be utilized and to stay idly or to lay idly. We, so we planted um, cabbages and onions. These cabbages are 4,000 uh, in Hamba. I want to fast forward a little bit, but yeah. it's so exciting. That is my vision for Farms to Zimbabwe. I would like all of the church leaders and all of the church members to be growing food, to be having clean homes, to be having an industrious spirit, to be thriving right where they are. And I believe that if we set that example and create that model of diligence and cleanliness and, and um, industry, that suddenly Zimbabwe could be a place that's a shining light that it deserves to be. It's a beautiful nation. And especially that our church members could be a blessing to that nation. So mm -hmm. I pray that Farm Stew, which is the recipe for abundant life inspired by Jesus, who is recorded in John 10, 10, saying that he wants that all may have life and have it more abundantly. That's my hope for Farm Stew in Zimbabwe and for Zimbabweans and everyone around the world yeah wow so as you can see farm stew has the potential to change the lives of hundreds of zimbabweans thank you for being a part of this webinar joy uh if you'd like to learn more about our ministry of farm stew you can do so by visiting our website and subscribing to our facebook page thank you for your service in zimbabwe i know you've grown to love the people and the children there especially and mm. you've been there during this challenging time and I just want to praise God for you. Can we close in prayer for Zimbabwe? Yeah, yeah let's pray for Zimbabwe. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Maybe I'll start and you close, okay? Okay, sounds good. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for the people of Zimbabwe. We know that you hear their cries, Lord, when they call out to you. And I, I pray, Father, that they can be like the people in Isaiah 58 that learn the type of worship that you truly want from us, a type of worship that cares for the poor and the hungry and doesn't neglect our own flesh and, and that we just in unity can work together. And that because of that, like you say in Isaiah 58, nine, that when we cry out to you, you will say, here I am. And so I pray that you will be fully present for the people of Zimbabwe during these challenging times help them to be able to have an abundant life. And Father, I, I thank you so much for this ministry, uh, which takes us from ourselves and gives us to others. And we pray that you would uh, open up amazing doors here in Zimbabwe for this ministry, that uh, lives would be transformed and changed, uh, that, that your truth and your, your, your love would be uh, disseminated to the, uh, the unreached places here in Zimbabwe and the places that are in, in superstition and error. And we pray, Lord, that, that uh, you would give us wisdom as we work together and um, put our hearts into this work for you. And we ask that you would continue to guide us and thank you for your blessings and, and for, your privilege, for the privilege of being able to pray to you and to uh, serve you in this capacity. 
May you guide and direct our steps. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.